scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So write this down, John 10.10. 10. Jesus was teaching and he said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is Satan's ministry. He said, but I am come that they may have life and to have it more abundantly. Other versions will say to have it to its fullest. So you must convince yourself, ladies and gentlemen, that you are not just here just to love God and to serve God alone. These are priorities, but that in our dealing with God, God's desire is that whilst we serve him, we have an opportunity to live excelling lives. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible there says, But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more. Say more and more. One more time. Say more and more. By this scripture, it means you should never have a better yesterday. You should never look back and rejoice over your yesterday at the detriment of your today hallelujah that no matter what it is the glory that is seen in your life today it should pale with respect to the glory that is to come may that be your testimony it is god's desire that we live an excelling life unfortunately Many believers are unable to capture this reality in their lives. When you look at the life of the average believer, it is not a good portrait of who God is. What you will largely find in the life of the believer is passion for God. And that is very important. Spiritual passion, love for God, love for the house of God. But then you look around the life of many believers, you cannot see the manifestation of the glory of God. The word glory comes from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. It means the weightiness. Whatever makes an object valuable or desirable is its glory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. That is very important. Whatever makes an object. So the glory of this phone is found in its ability to either provide speed or high internet. Are we together now? The glory of this mic is in its ability to amplify my voice. So when we talk about the glory of God, we mean all the characteristic features that make God, God. And the Bible says God desires that it is revealed through the saints. Your life is glorious to the degree to which we see present in your life the factors that make God, God. His wisdom, his power, and all that makes God, God. Are we following now? So it's important to establish this. I'm saying this particularly because many of us and most of us that come around this area, we usually, sadly but truthfully, we do not have many models that give us a balanced picture of God's idea as to how the believer should be. We know God's expectation today because there was a man called Abraham. Is that true? And the Bible says in Isaiah 51, it says, Look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bore thee. It says, For I called him alone and I blessed him. So most of us come from families, most of us come from cultures where 
the people we saw around us were either people who were very spiritual but they failed in every other aspect of their lives or maybe a few people out of a great family you may find one or two people who lift their heads a bit at least within the context of that locality and then they reject God they resent anything God or you find people in between so it is difficult for many believers to attain onto this balanced state of excellence because we largely have not seen models that um, exemplify that it's like people choose certain aspects they either choose wealth at the detriment of their spiritual lives or they choose spirituality at the detriment of every other aspect of their lives but the destiny of the believer is found in genesis 24 and verse 1 it says and abraham genesis 24 and verse 1 was old and well stricken in age the bible says and the lord had blessed abraham in all things prophesy to yourself say all things that means eventually every aspect of your life should capture and reveal the glory of god are we following now i'm saying this because nothing will change in your life until you indoctrinate yourself to believe that regardless my current situation it is still the will of god for me to live an excelling life an excelling life is not a life of competition an excelling life is not a life of comparison an excelling life is not a life of saying i am better than you the bible says and they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise so that is not what we are called into but that the bible tells us that god wants to use us in fact he says this in excellently in ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 give us please ephesians 2 and verse 10 it says for we are his workmanship his tools it says created in christ jesus unto good works which god had before ordained that we should walk in we are not just the sheep of his pasture we are not just his children the bible calls us his workmanship you know what that means that the tools that he uses like when you see a doctor his workmanship is his stethoscope and all that he uses to excel he's saying that we are his workmanship that means when the world wants to see how mighty god is he uses the believer just like tools to display the dimensions of power and glory that he has if you're with me say amen, amen. it is a very difficult thing but you have to walk your way through believing that I may be in one room. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I may come from a family where I'm currently staying in a mud house. I may be wearing a torn cloth. I may not have an opportunity to eat well, but regardless the situation, this one thing you must have at the back of your mind, that my current situation can never define my destiny. Are we together now? That it is God's desire that I live an excelling life. Please say it after me. It is God's desire that i live an excelling life one more time say it is god's desire that i live an excelling life you try to make this confession on your own and you will be surprised at the mental enemies that will rise to challenge that statement the moment you make that statement your pocket answers who are you talking about you make that statement the 11 people in your family with the highest person not amounting to anything will answer the room you are staying leaking with water the inabilities that surround you these are the things that keep you down and you feel stupid for making that confession but the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so say so let the healed of the lord say so let the blessed of the lord say so are we learning very important I needed to take some time to stress this point because many people do not know or they have not assimilated it spiritually that God's desire is that we live an excelling life. Many are trying to live a competitive life. Many are trying to live a life of comparison. I am better than my brother. I am better than my sister. Out of my family, I am the only one who has risen. That's not what you are called to do. And you see, when you bring this point to your spirit, the devil will use all kinds of excuses. You've come from a family where nobody has risen. You've come from this and that. And it may be true. 
as far as your current context is concerned but let me tell you i'm saying it again whether you are inside whether you are outside whether you are young or old i don't care what the limitations are around your life the first thing i'm telling you in the name of jesus christ is that it is god's desire for you to live an excelling life now whether you actually live that excelling life or not is another discussion but that in the mind of god it is never his will for you to come and live walking around the earth a purposeless and a visionless life and then just die in shame and pain and reproach that cannot be the will of god are we together write this down our success in this kingdom brings glory to god one of the reasons why we must succeed is that our success in this kingdom brings glory to god write it down very simple statement but it is very profound our success brings glory to god john chapter 15 please give us verse 8 and then we jump to verse 16 john 15 and verse 8 let's read together in concert you can see it written ready one to read herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples the father is not glorified if you do not bear much fruit another word for much fruit is notable results for those of you i presume everybody should be following the teachings but i did a series of teaching commanding salvation over territories and i taught you in that teaching that your results are also preachers that is a sermon only your results can preach you were never designed to be the only preacher are we together now your results are also preachers there is a sermon only your results can preach and if you do not attain to a point where you produce notable kingdom results you will rob your territory of a kind of evangelism the bible says if you do not believe me because of who i am believe me for the work's sake that means the work is also preaching hearing is my father glorified when you bear much fruit he says so shall ye be my disciples verse 16 says ye have not chosen me it says but i have chosen you and ordained you the word ordained means to commission to legitimize your operation i have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain say amen. amen that means in god's design i repeat one more time for emphasis you should never have a better yesterday the believer should not sit down reminiscing on yesterday and discussing on yesteryears the bible says listen carefully that jesus christ the same yesterday the same today and forever that means if i look at your life the version of you last year the version of you beginning of this year should far exceed what you are now and i'm not just speaking in terms of physical things alone are we together now very important most believers do not know that becoming successful is ministry becoming successful is ministry write it down if i tell you list the various activities that translate to ministry you will say preaching you are right you will say giving you are right evangelism you are right but most people do not know that kingdom success is ministry now please pay attention because i'm going to be giving you a balance when i talk about kingdom success we're not talking about this mundane godless pursuit that alienates jesus christ out of the system make no mistakes about it that is not what i'm saying but it's important for you to know that your success is not just a goal achieved your success is ministry and the same way you pay attention to the preaching of the word the same way you pay attention to every other dimension of ministry you must pay attention to kingdom success are we together galatians 1 24 it's an anthem in this ministry simple but profound scripture let's read it together one to read 
and they glorified God in me. One more time. And they glorified God in me. They looked at my life and at the end of it, they said, God, you are great. May that be someone's testimony. That's what it means to be a living epistle. Apostle Paul said we are living epistles. You know what that means? That if somebody did not read his Bible and left home without reading the Bible, when he sees you, you become a continuation of his devotion. That your life opens up chapters in the Bible he could not read. So he finds out that the Bible is everywhere around him. The one in his room is just one of the many available. There are many living epistles. That someone who knew you before, if they know you now, your, your life and your results begin to shout it that God can lift any man from a dunghill to wherever. Is someone learning? In Matthew chapter 25, we begin our reading from verse 14. We know it theologically to be the parable of the talents. Matthew 25. So Jesus is teaching on the kingdom of heaven and he's giving a parable that the parable the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country the bible says he called his own servants and delivered to them goods notice he didn't give them a message he gave them goods 2015 now he says unto one he gave five talents unto another he gave two unto another he gave one to every man according to his several ability not according to his love for them according to their several abilities and straightway he took on his journey and when you read down for sake of time the bible says the guy who had five went and traded it he made five more the guy who had two went and traded it and made two more but the guy who had one in anger obviously jealousy pain did not do anything with his talent and the bible says he went to bury it in the ground the mistake is that you only bury seeds not talents you don't bury talents you bury seeds when you bury talents in the ground they don't grow it is seeds that grow and in anger he went to bury it and when the man came now the owner of the, the, the goods, he demanded accountability from them. The one with five, what have you done? He said, while you were away, I was busy working on these five. I have five more. And he said, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. He says, you have been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then the guy with two, he said you gave me two and i didn't have time to compete with the guy who had five i was focused doing my best and out of the two you gave me i made two more same commendation he says thou has been faithful over a few things i will make thee ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of the lord now here is the lesson verse 24 the one who received one talent did not know that if he had done something with one if he did the same thing the guy with five did if he did the same thing the guy with two did he would have had one more and he would have gotten the same commendation are we together now the guy with five got well done not because he had five but because he brought five more the guy with two he didn't say this guy worked more than you it would be unfair to expect ten from the guy you gave two so this gentleman would have done his best he would have gone to ask them and say what are you doing with your own let me at least do with my one and say well this is the one then after he produces the result he will now say but god what do you why did you give me one but he was angry lord i knew thee that thou art a hard man can you imagine it's like an employee talking to his employer reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed you see the kind of bitterness and the things that were in that man you see why he got one that one was even an act of mercy i was afraid and i went and hid the talent in the earth and lo here is your talent hear what jesus says to him thou wicked and slothful 
other versions will say unprofitable servant it says since you knew that i like reaping where i did not sow why didn't you go and give it in the bank so that at least i will have interest even if it was that means even if the guy brought a little percent he would have commended him for at least doing something are we together and he rebuked him the bible says take the talent from him and give it to the guy that had 10. it then means when a believer does not produce results it is possible that even your bishopric your bishopric it it defines the circumference of your relevance because you see i told you that every believer is a living epistle there is a sermon that your life and your results should preach and if you rob people from hearing that sermon god loves you but he loves other people who should hear you too eventually he will replace you and it is my prayer that nobody be replaced in this life many great things god can speak concerning you but it does not guarantee that you will walk in them let me tell you ladies and gentlemen there are many people today destined for glory destined for grace some of them have seen it prophetically but as it is right now many people never end up living one tenth of their prophetic destiny are we together now write this down when the bible says well don't write just listen before you write when the bible talks about good success it immediately suggests that there is bad success and let me talk a bit about bad success how do i know that the kind of success i'm pressing towards is good success or bad success i will tell you very simple bad success is any kind of result that you seek to achieve listen to me that you will have to give up your love for god are we together and the desire to be a blessing to attain it that means the condition for attaining unto bad success is that your soul suffers in the process the condition for attaining unto bad success is that in your desire to press for it people are wounded people are hurt you do not become a blessing while you are doing so you negate genesis chapter 12 from verse 2 and 3 it says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed is someone learning now why am i teaching you this because we live in a world right now unfortunately especially our generation there is an obsession for success there is an obsession to make it and the desperation continues to grow it looks like there is a stigma that comes upon your life if at a certain level certain results are not achieved financially and otherwise and so many people right now are under all kinds of pressure i must make it by any means i will do anything it does not matter what so there are people today joining all kinds of occultic groups all kinds of fraternities all kinds of gangs formally or informally because they desire to make it it looks like there is a way society celebrates you when you make it so finally you are rich now this car is your own this house is your own we have all kinds of slangs that define what we call success and unfortunately our generation is perpetually under pressure there are many people right now carrying self-inflicted burdens loads and luggages that did not come by god because of the pressure to prove a point there is bad success that the more you press your spiritual life is dying i must make the money by all means i must marry by all means i must have the child by all means i must grow up go abroad by all means it does not matter what happens to my spiritual life your prayer life is dying it doesn't matter let me just make the money no at the end of it you will find out that what you left for what you have was not worth it did you hear what i'm saying because for many people we have this idea 
especially about money now i'm not downplaying all these things i'm teaching you on success already but many people have this idea that if you fail in every aspect of your life but you finally have some money either by a good job a good business at least let you have a house a car and something they just feel you are all right it is a deception of the devil are we together there is bad success unfortunately bad success seems to be more fashionable than good success because of the price and the protocol it takes to attain unto good success it looks too long the process looks too cumbersome i can cheat my way and manipulate my way into good success many of us probably there are some of you right now hearing me and listening to me God sent you here today because you are about to make careless and even foolish decisions because of this obsession you have covenanted with yourself that this year 2023 especially that God has declared unto us prophetically that is a year of open doors I have told you even a prison has doors so just because a door is open you need to find out where you are entering hallelujah bad success our world is full of bad success people cheat people kill people join fraternities they will tell you go and bring your mother as a sacrifice and you say it doesn't matter she was going to die anyway the only thing is that i'm just hurrying the, the time hmm. you see the thing with satan eh, is you never know the price of what you're gaining for until you taste of it a bit so you begin to walk and enjoy go and ask people who have been part of cult groups and fraternities for the first few years it will look as if there is no demand then one day at the point where your failure can affect you and affect others the devil now comes and says just to let you know it was a loan you have been collecting i'm going to calculate the loan and the interest now you are a big man and everybody knows you are a big man how do I survive the shame? So, your firstborn, not Abraham's kind of Isaac, or this one, you are killing your son. Everything that would desire you leaving the Lord, every kind of success that would desire you compromising on your relationship with the Lord to attain unto. I am telling you this is deception you are only licking poison that was sugar coated with sugar it's only a matter of time it will be like a dart to your heart is someone learning yes there are many many people today it will take god to help them because they have dappled into all kinds of satanic things and that includes preachers there are some of you when you see what god is doing with our lives you admire it so much and someone will tell you, look, there's a way. There's a way we do this. There's a way ministry is done. There's a way they can wash your eyes. There's a way you can prophesy. There is a way you can get money for ministry. It looks very attractive and marketable. After all, I suffered, you would say. And let me tell you the truth. Don't say it can't happen to me. Just say, God, show me mercy. Because you see, the devil is not a fool. He will not come to you when you have options. He will allow life to press you to a point. Many of you do not know what the human being can do under desperation. By the time you see that your mother is dying, somebody will now come to you and say, I told you, except you don't love your mother, there's a place I can pay the transport for you. And you say, Mama, you, you, you gave too much for me. It can't be that I'm a failure and I could not help my mother. And you will get into things that you did not imagine satan will not come to you when you are just a fresh graduate you are bubbling with every revelation he will wait till after five years no job no job no nothing no husband no child no nothing and then he will, he will use your friend to speak and say now for you if this is your definition of christianity i'd rather be an unbeliever you will say it doesn't matter but you enter the room and start crying and say god this is unfair i i believe that i did everything to be successful this is what is killing there are people who cannot come out today 
esteem problems have affected so many people because many years ago you would see them and think they would be so successful they carried the semblance of a champion but years after it looked like their lives have been reduced to almost nothing I announce to you set yourself free by this teaching tonight there is bad success when you say you are admiring people make sure you first define the kind of success you are looking at are we together now because there is the kind of success where you now see someone a millionaire today traveling around the world but you check his spiritual life the fire that was there is no longer there the love for Jesus that was there is no longer there there are many people who go abroad and return back unbelievers People who were prayer warriors, fasting giants. And you ask them, they tell you, forget all that thing. It's just poverty that makes Africa behave this way. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Hallelujah. So there is bad success. And I'm giving you the indices to measure it. Number one, that any kind of success pursuit that will demand that your spiritual life dies as the condition for attaining it. And then number two, the kind of result that demands that you hurt and wound other people. You see, let me tell you this. Once upon a time, the Bible talks about David. And David said, oh, that I would drink of the pool of Bethlehem. And the Bible says he's mighty man. These were men he had trained. They said, you've trained us so much. Is this what you want? Consider it. They went and tore down a troop. I mean, they massacred people and went and fetched the water and said, as you have demanded, David said, I cannot drink this again. There are too many lives that went for this. That is a man with conscience. But there are people who do not care, who dies, who goes through pain, which family goes through penury. Let me just make it. Even if it's my brother that dies, let him die. Let me just make it. And some of us, there is a growing desperation. Because you will come into a circle of people who want to make it in ministry, want to make it in business, want to make it in life, and it does not matter what. I must make it in ministry. I want results. Anyhow, I want a name. I want fame. I'm telling you that there is bad success because there are many people you admire today. The clock is only ticking. Are we together? They have compromised on their Christian life and they have the cause of many people are upon their head. There are business people today carrying the cause of too many people. There are families today carrying the cause of too many people. Most of us, this issue of generational causes and the rest, it came because of times of wickedness that were done by forefathers except for the revelation of the finished work of Christ and now administering the blood with understanding some of us our grandfathers were herbalists by the time they were slaughtering certain women they made pronouncements I may die but your children will pay that price and he said still die now you came up through that loin and you find out that everything good to work for you that speaking Abel though dead yet speaketh when the saints die, their words don't die. There are people, some of our people that were part of, they massacred missionaries. Some of you were part of the pain of many people. The Bible says the curse of the Lord is upon the house of the wicked. I'm reminding you that there is bad success. So that you don't start clamoring for everything. We go on the internet today and there are many people marketing different models of success. As a young lady, there is what they teach you. This is the happening thing now. If you are not doing it, you are not in fashion. As a gentleman, there are things you must have. Where is your car? Where are your designers? Where are your snapshots around the world? You are not making it. 
and there's that pressure and many of you are already deviating from the path that leads to authentic glory into the path of chasing shadows whereas when you started with god the road you were following may look slow but that is the road that will take you there the road of prayer you didn't have money but there's no night that you will not pray for one hour or two hours later on someone told you what is there in prayer what is there in studying the word you will keep reading the bible like a fool till you become a failure now you said this bible thing i'm tired of it let me start using mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. then thou shall make thy way prosperous and thou shall have good success as a preacher they told you there is a way to raise money you can bring in somebody to come and manipulate people and you will get money and after all that manipulation all that you got was three hundred thousand and god said is this what you replace me for for three hundred thousand when i can call nations to come and stand with you you have reduced me and put me side by side with three hundred thousand all right so be it and you find out that that 3,000 will be spent treating a mysterious sickness that the doctors would not be able to diagnose. And yet someone else will be sitting down quietly serving the Lord sincerely and saying, Lord, I know I got up drinking Gary, but I trust you. I will follow your path with dignity and honor. And one day it will look like magic. God will lift that person and you say, I used to know this say bad success say good success good success is the kind that ultimately brings glory to god and then becomes a blessing and an inspiration to your generation let me repeat again that good success is the kind of pursuit that ultimately brings glory to god and then will allow your life and your results to be an, a blessing and an inspiration to a generation that when someone is advising either their child when someone is advising someone somewhere he will say listen follow this model there is a path that has been earmarked for you may your name become a model for someone in the name of jesus may your life become a model that every time someone wants to inspire their child or their staff you are the name that will readily come to mind there are names today we do not call our children even though they are in the bible for instance lucifer for instance judas iscariot are we together you will hardly find people carrying those names and if for any reason they give children the names they just wait patiently until they are adults they quickly go to the court and change it and say god forbid i'm not the one who will carry that kind of course Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.